Interview John Lennon and Yoko Ono, New York, 1971. It just shows you then, with <coughs> all the money one can earn, that doesn't bring security of mind, does it? Well, uh, no. you see, we earn millions and millions of money, but I must tell you that the Beatles got very little of it. Yeah. We've all got houses, but uh, it's usually uh, we've managed to pay for them finally now after all these years. Yes. Uh, and that really only happened since Klein came in, the, the so-called wolf. And there's millions earned, but we never got it, you know. Where, well, who got it then, John? Well, you know, there's lots of big companies in London with uh, various names. You just have to check them out and their connection with the Beatles, and you see where the money's gone. Everybody. And in America, too. Everybody connected with us as millionaires, except for the Beatles. You're not They used to tell Paul and I we are millionaires. We never have been. No. I might possibly be coming up to it shortly, you know, if we get lucky. But it's true, you know, we didn't get the money. And you, you certainly aren't a millionaire. You never have been a millionaire. No, 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 no. Not, no, no. not George, Ringo. No, no, George and Ringo are practically penniless. Yoko now has got more money than they had when Klein came in. Yeah. And she's, she, that's in two years, you know. Yeah. And we were working ten years and the money it's was just... It's the contract, the wrong contract, you know. You know, Brian was a, a beautiful guy, Brian Epstein, and he was a, an intuitive, theatrical guy and he knew we had something and he presented us well. But he had lousy business advice, not to say that somebody was crooking him particularly, but he got lousy advice taking and everything. Taking advantage of. Taking advantage you were of. Taking advantage we all were, Brian included, you know, and yeah. none of us got, got it. So, I mean, that's life. I mean, you know, it's no, no, no big news that s no. some artist or some kids in showbiz got robbed, right? It's the same old story. The attitude is, uh, if they have money, they won't work. Yes. That's the old adage in show business. Yes. If you give the kids money or the, the star or the, whoever he is money, he won't work. That's not true. If you give an artist money, he's secure and he can work. It's the worrying about money and wh whether he's going to have to... Uh, my big worry always was, am I going to be Mickey Rooney having... I know we've earned it, but where's it gone? I've got to pay the tax someday. Yes. I, they won't be, it's no good me saying, well, I never got it. Uh, the books say that it came to the Beatles, you know, or something like that, and we're going to have to pay tax the rest of our lives. And that yeah. was my big worry. And so it's no big news, though. We were robbed, so, you know, yeah. it's old hat stuff. Yeah. But you, so you had your I just warn any kids coming in the business, don't sign anything. Right, right. Unless the lawyer's your brother. Yeah, yeah right. You know, get, keep it in the family. You, you mentioned that there's been a divorce. Do, do you think there's going to be a reconciliation of the group ever? Or, I can't see. There's no reason w why we should ever play together. I mean, it. listen to the music. Uh, do, would George have ever flourished like that if we carried on with the group? No chance. We, we, there was no room. How could I thought he was working on a, uh, on a solo album. Well, well I suppose we could have worked on. together. And No, no, he wasn't. He wasn't. He worked on the solo al album after the split. Right. You don't think you would have, uh, you would have had the chance to have done If both. people need the Beatles so much, all they have to do is to buy each album and make a track out of it. Mm. Uh, and make it, put it on tape, track by track, one of me, one of Paul, one of George, one of Ringo, if they really need it that much, because otherwise the music is just the same, only on separate albums. Instead of having the White Album or Abbey Road, where I sing a song, George sings a song, Paul sings a song, Ringo sings a song, one, 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 like that, we, ha we make an album each, that's the only difference. And it's far better music, because we're not suppressed. In the Beatles, we had, by the time the Beatles were at, at their peak, we were cutting each other down to size. We were limiting our capacity to write and perform by having to fit it into some kind of format. And that's why it caused trouble, you know? But you don't ever see... I mean, for me personally, when you listen to the Stones music, nothing's ever happened. It's the same old stuff goes on and on and on forever. I've never heard anything different from them. Mm -hmm. So I think it'd be a good, good scene if they broke up and made some individual music because it's the same old hash, rehash of the same stuff over and over again. Well, I ask you this because every time I... Nothing well, personal, I'm Mick. You know I love you <laughs> and Keith, but, you know, I mean, I think it'd do them good to split up. Mm. I ask you this because every time the Beatles come up in a conversation, yeah. people say, oh, do you think they'll play together again? You know, it's the thing that... Oh, well, I couldn't say no uh, with, uh, categorically on, on the Bible and on Grapefruit, I swear. <laughs> I get to Grapefruit in. <laughs> I swear we'd never play together again under any circumstances whatsoever. I have no idea. But personally, I don't see any reason to form that group again. Paul has his new band, I have a new band. No doubt George will have a band and Ringo will have a band. I mean, that's why I brought out the Plastic Ono Band originally, to di differentiate. That's me. That's my band. You know, it might be non-existent and it might vary every time you see us, but that's what I'm playing with. That's and what I am. And you're freer now, I think. Yes. 
But you're obviously friends again. I mean, obviously. well, we're, we're not we're not fighting too much. It's silly, and I always remember watching the film with uh, who was it? Not Rodgers and Hammerstein. Those British people that wrote those silly operas years ago. Who are they? Uh, Gilbert and Sullivan. Yeah, Gilbert and Sullivan. I always remember watching the film with um, Robert Morley in, and you know, thinking we'll never get to that. Mm. You know, and we did, which really upset me, but I really never thought we'd be so stupid, but we did. What, like splitting like they Like splitting and something. arguing, you know, and then they come back and one's in a wheelchair 20 years later, you know, all that. I never thought we'd come to that because I didn't think we were that stupid. But we were naive enough to let people come between us, and that's what happened, you know. But it was happening anyway. I don't mean Yoko, I mean businessmen, you know. What, All of you, them. Do you think they were? Do you think businessmen were? Responsible well, no. It's like anything. Well, when who, people would decide to get a divorce, you know, you just quite often you decide amicably. But when then when you get your lawyers and they say don't talk to the other party unless there's a lawyer present, then that's when the drift really starts happening. And then when you can't speak to each other without a lawyer, then there's no communication. And it's really lawyers that make divorce is nasty. You know, if there was a nice ceremony like getting married for divorce, it would be much better even divorce of business partners because it you wouldn't be so nasty but it always gets nasty because you're never allowed to speak your own mind you have to talk in double dutch you have to spend all your time with a lawyer and you get frustrated and you end up saying and doing things you wouldn't really do under normal circumstances do, do you john you don't think it had anything to do with marriage and wives and that's no because i was married from before the beatles left liverpool that made no never made any difference i mean uh, Sin didn't have a career like Yoko does, but uh, married Patty had a career that never upset it. Uh, if uh, you know, uh, but she's given her <coughs> career up, hasn't she? Well, not really for a time being, but she's mm. never given. She's never became a housewife. I mean, mm. Patty just uh, it was big enough to decide when she works and, and to do special things like all top models do, and that's the position she's in. Not because she gave up her work to become a housewife. You don't. You won't see Patty washing dishes mm. i mean she no. obviously she will wash a dish but <laughs> i mean she, she has a she has a career of her own and uh uh maureen is a fa fantastic artist in her own right as well she has a apart from bringing up all all those that tribe of ringos she also is an artist you know and uh, it has nothing to do with wives if it is yoko and linda's fault for breaking up the beatles can they have the credit for the great music that each of us have made individually because Paul, you admit Paul there must is be selling a clash between Yoko and Linda. No, Linda no, and Yoko no. never had an argument ever. No. Never. How can uh, two women split up four strong men? It's impossible. You know, some, the Beatles were disintegrating might, slowly some, after yeah. Brian Epstein died. It was a slow death, and it was happening. It's evident, and let it be. Uh, although Linda and Yoko were evident then, but they weren't when we started it. I don't think it was evident in in India, when George and I stayed there, and Paul and Ringo left. And it was evident on the White Album, you know. It's, it's just natural. It's not a great disaster. People keep talking about it as if it's the end of the earth. It's only a rock group that split up. It's nothing important. You know, you have all the old records there if you want to reminisce. You have all this great music, I think. We've much, we're, Paul is selling more records than he ever sold as a Beatle. I'm selling more than I ever sold as a Beatle, as an individual. Between the four of us, we're, we're selling many more records than the Beatles ever did, obviously. It's insane. People, even the, even the young people, refuse to accept change. Yeah. That's what the problem is. They will not accept change. Now, there's a place in New York in the village called Max's Kansas City, and everyone who's everyone always eats there, all the artists and everyone who's everyone. Now, Max's Kansas City have decided to change the decor after 20 years. Yeah. All these artists and radicals and revolutionaries are getting very upset because he's going to change the decor. That's how the world is. The underground are just as straight as the overground, and they don't like change. Mm. And that's all there is to it, you know. Now, and I know, I, I told people 20 years ago, whenever it was, I'm not going to be singing She Loves You When I'm 30. I was 30 last year, and it was then when I broke the band up or I decided to leave, I don't know when they decided to leave, whatever, that's when it happened. Mm. I knew I wouldn't be doing the same thing. Mm. It just doesn't work like that. It's like a rugby team, sometime you have to get married and leave the boys yeah. on a Saturday night, that's how it is.